impromptu live you know the drill um i am working on this side table today so i started this yesterday and this is going to be a video on my youtube channel a proper edited video not just a live and i i've been working on it yesterday i did a live on the dixie bell youtube channel yesterday and I thought I would just pop on and show you what I'm up to with it today. So this is fairly kind of simple colour palette. I'm trying to remember what I put on it. Um, I've got pistachio, which is something that I've been wanting to use for absolutely ages. And it's a really gorgeous green. That's pistachio. And in amongst all of this i've also got going on malachite which is a deeper green which is here and then i added some highlights with wheat and a little bit of daffodil because this video is going to kind of be watch me mess around with some terra clay paint it's not going to be a tutorial as such this is a really hard paint to give you any kind of sort of tutorial kind of thing on um mainly because it to a certain extent it does what it likes this paint it does what it wants it's got a bit of a mind of its own and it's a bit unpredictable so you could fin you i could finish this piece i could edit the video morning lisa i could tell you exactly what i've done you could go and do it on another piece and it looked different um so yeah with terry clay paint it's one of those where um just kind of kind of have a play around with it and it'll hopefully work out so it's looking kind of clean looking um i don't have the terra wax yet um hopefully it won't be much longer but i don't have the terra wax so the terra wax is an oil-based wax you can add dixie dirt into that wax to kind of make it a different color um, because you all know that I'm a massive fan of using black waxes, brown waxes and whatnot to kind of age and stuff. So I feel like that's lacking on this piece. So I'm going to attempt to mix a brown and to add a little bit of shading with a brown in terra clay paint and then probably layer some colours over the top. I don't know. I'm winging it. I'm just going to see how it goes. But I thought I'd show you what I'm doing. Um, so you can mix browns using several different colors and i was just playing around with them i've got a sketch pad it's a watercolor sketch pad and these are really good for messing around with paint on because they don't curl up and crinkle um i've got lots of different things going on in here some of which i can't show you top secret um but this is this is not top secret so i was playing around with kind of opposite colors so this mix here is actually marigold and cerulean blue so these are all terra colors and I've written down because I would forget. This was this was late last night and I would have forgotten by this morning. So I always write down what I've what I've mixed. Um, so that was marigold and cerulean blue. That was elderberry and wheat, which is a really pretty shade. It's a more torpy shade, I would say. Um, and I'm not sure that it's gonna be dark enough for this. That's actually thrown out more of a greeny tone. And then I mix this. So this is daffodil and elderberry. So daffodil is a bright yellow. Elderberry is a purple. And that's thrown out that kind of shade. It's, I would say, I'd probably say it's close to pinecone. That's kind of shade. And I actually think that is going to work quite well. I don't want anything too dark because that wouldn't work. So I think that might that might work on this to add a little bit of add a little bit of shading. Also the drawer stuck in because I was painting with the drawer in. Um, so I'm gonna mix it and I'm gonna add it on. I don't know what it's gonna do, uh, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. So what did I say it was? Daffodil and elderberry. Um, okay. Let's get some daffodil. No, that's not daffodil. That's wheat. So wheat is a slightly more muted yellow. Daffodil, daffodil is a bright old yellow. There's not really anything in the chalk mineral paint range that compares. Um, kernel mustard is a lot more mustard, more golden. 
and Daisy is not as vibrant. Daisy is more of a kind of a creamy yellow. This is like whoa, yellow. That's a that's a four yellow. And then elderberry, I've still got one of the little sample pots that I've had for absolutely ages because I don't use purple a huge amount. Um, although I have done a piece using this and it is actually a really nice shade. So I've still got a little little bit of this. So let's let's try and mix the brown and see what happens. This might end up like completely looking naff, but there we go. So I'm gonna add some daffodil. You can see how thick this terra clay paint is. It's hardly dripping down the plate. It's just like, it's a really, really thick consistency. And I'm only gonna mix a little bit because it dries really quick as well. And with it being on a paper plate, obviously the paint, the um, the the paper, the paper, blah, 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 the paper plate is going to absorb the moisture as, as what moisture is in the paint, and that's going to dry it out even quicker. But I haven't got anything else to mix my paint on. I've only got a paper plate, so here we are. So bright yellow and purple gives you brown. A, a shade of brown. Is that the same? So, there we go. Can you see? It's giving me a bit of a brown. Do I add more purple? I didn't turn my phone on, do not disturb, or did I? I can't remember, let me just check. Oh yeah, it's on. It's okay, do not disturb. I keep forgetting to do it, and you know, someone will ring me and offer me a car extended warranty or something. You know it's gonna happen, halfway through a live. And the van is way past extended warranty, I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't even have an engine currently, so good luck with warranty in that bad boy. I've just added a smidge more purple in. Obviously, the more purple I add, the deeper it's going to go, but I don't want it to look purple. I want it to look purpley. I don't want it to look too, too purpley. There we go. That's quite a good tone. So that's a bit, a bit of brown. Let's go for it. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm also, these are the brushes that I used yesterday. A lot of these, mainly these. So these, this is a Bell brush. Obviously everything that I'm using is a Dixie Bell product. Um, you can get them from Dixie Bell retailers. If there isn't a Dixie Bell retailer near you, you can find them online from the Dixie Bell website and they ship globally. But if you can, support a stockist. So these are the brushes that I was using yesterday. This is the Bell brush. It is a natural bristle brush and I prefer natural bristle brushes with terra clay paint because it just promotes texture and, and all that malarkey. So I prefer it. These bristles are quite compact and they're quite, it's quite a soft brush. So it was kind of smushing all of the colours together to get this kind of boho-y kind of look, which I do like. But I wanted more of a layered look, sort of lots and lots of layers of tonal greens. So I'm going to switch. I'm going to switch brushes and I'm going to use this. This is a bit damp. It should be OK, I think. Let's try it on my T-shirt. Um, these are premium chip brushes. They're very inexpensive brushes, very inexpensive brushes, but they're very good quality. Um, they don't shed like some brushes do. Hi, Dennis. They don't shed. They, I've still got some of the original premium chip brushes from when I was first a content creator uh, a couple of years ago. Um, they last very well. And what they do do is kind of wear down a little bit and they get a little bit more scratchy and they give a really good effect. And I use these quite a lot for waxing. And obviously you can see the difference between the bristles. This has got a bigger surface area and the bristles are much more compact and they're softer. They're a higher quality bristle because it's a higher quality brush. This has been used and abused and you can see the bristles are more sort of spaced out. They're a little bit more sort of spidery and they're not as high quality. So they're a little bit sort of, they're not as soft. They're a little bit harsher. So 
I feel like I've normally got about 20 of these on the go and I can't find, I can only find one. Okay, we move. So I'm going to add some of this to my brush, but I'm just going to take the excess off on the side of the plate. So I've got some on there, but not a huge amount because I don't want to go in too heavy with the brown. Although it's not a problem if I do, because it can easily be removed. I just, I'm just going to go steady and build it up. I don't know what this is going to do. So we'll see. And I just want to add some shading around here. So this is just going to give a softer, more, obviously the brush is as dry as I can get it. It is a little bit damp. But yesterday I used quite a bit of water when I was adding these kind of layers of colours of greens and yellows up. I think I'm going to avoid water today. So I'm going to kind of build up the layers. Now that I've got a kind of a base of these greens going on, I'm going to add more layers in similar tones. I'm going to keep this really tonal. I'm not going to add any any sort of like bright colours or anything, opposite colours to this. I'm just going to keep it tonal with the greens and the yellows. And I'm just going to add some more layers, but probably with a dry brush instead of using a water mister to kind of get those colours to melt together. I'm going to keep it, I'm going to keep my brushes dry and I'm going to try and find my other ones of these so that I can add lots of layers of those greens, but kind of let them dry a bit let them dry down a bit so then we're going over the top so they're not all melting together because this this paint kind of just melts together if you struggle with blending paint can you hear that airplane it's a bit loud um if you struggle with blending paint um chalk mineral paint or whatever paint that you use um this paint might be worth a go because you can't actually, you, you can't, you can't get it wrong. <laughs> you can leave this to dry overnight and you can still go back and blend it the next day. Um, because it's, until it's sealed with either the Terra um, oil-based wax or the, one of the clear coats that you can use, you can also use Gator Hide with this. It works really nicely with Gator Hide. Until it's sealed, you can reactivate this. So this green was dry yesterday. It was, it's been dry all night, basically. I've left it all night to dry. If I sprayed this and rubbed, it come off. It's completely reactivated. So it differs from chalk paint in that way. Whereas chalk mineral paint, um, you can keep it activated by spritzing it with water and you can keep it damp and you can manipulate it. But then once it's dry, it is kind of dry. It is harder to reactivate it. It will reactivate a little bit as long as you haven't let it dry, you know, weeks and weeks. But once it has dried down, it is harder to reactivate this stuff. I could basically take this off with a wet cloth. That's how much it reactivates, so it's got to be sealed. It's a very kind of arty-farty paint, so you have to seal it. There's no two ways about it. Whereas chalk mineral paint, you don't actually have to seal that. A lot of people do, because obviously it's got chalk content in it, which gives it a very matte finish. So a lot of people choose to put a wax on it, or a clear coat, or gator hide, to either give it a different sheen level and to just to add a little bit more protection but it is actually very very durable on its own this you do need to top coat so i am i'm thinking the brown was a success can you just see how much depth it's added already to that drawer and i've hardly really done anything i've just used this and just kind of scratched it around the edge you can still see the green underneath it's not a solid line um it's very subtle and i'm just gonna just keep adding bits bits of brown to it and if i run out of brown i'll just mix some more 
because it doesn't matter if it's a slightly different tone because I am going for that kind of tonal kind of vibe. Uh, so where else should we put some brown? Maybe under here. Maybe bring it down a little bit. Because there's some quite bright colours in the range of the terra clay paint. I mean, you saw how bright daffodil is and pistachio. They're really bright colours. They actually mix really well and give you lots and lots of different possibilities of custom colours whereas if you've already got something that's fairly muted in tone you you it'll kind of it'll never be it'll never give you any sort of vibrancy it'll still give you muted tones if you mix it i'm talking maybe like the wheat excuse the the green on the lid the wheat color is this off kind of muted sort of yellowy color if you mix that with another colour, it would always be a little bit more of a muted tone because you can't lift a muted tone very well. Whereas if you mix a muted tone and a brighter tone, you do still get that kind of punchiness like I've got here with these with these greens. So the colours range is actually really clever because it's got it's got some muted tones it's got some really pretty neutrals but then it has got these really vivid bright colors so there's um i haven't got them all out because i've only got the ones that i'm working with at the minute but there's another one that's a very bright turquoise called lanny's lagoon um and that is super bright and it makes a really good one to mix as well because it's very pigmented and, and bright just get a cup of tea so yeah these brushes are definitely definitely what i'm going to be using i think with a dry with a dry as brush as possible and i'm probably going to get a rag and take the excess off as i'm trying to build up these layers so as long as i don't introduce too much water back onto this this green that I started out with at the start of the video will pretty much stay how it is. It's not gonna, it's not gonna reactivate. It's only when you add water that it reactivates. I'm gonna add a bit of brown around here. Smush that out with, that's too wet. That's dry. This is a really old French, French tip brush. This is a newer one. You can see the point on that. That's how much I've used that one. So again, another natural bristle brush, slightly different shape. I'm just gonna kind of scratch that in as well. Kind of gives a similar effect um, to brown wax. That's kind of how I would apply brown wax if I wanted to add shading. Normally, if we were talking chalk mineral paint and I've got all my best down waxes, I would probably have clear waxed this and then added some brown wax around the edge to add that kind of little bit of dimension and depth. But best down wax is not advised to use with this paint because it's water-based and as i've just said water reactivates this so if you're rubbing your water-based bestang wax over the terra clay paint what you're going to do is reactivate it and probably cause your paint to smudge reactivate lift so bestang wax although i do know some people that have had absolutely fine results using bestang wax um it's not advised but that having said, it is a no rules paint. So you can do what you like. You can do what you like. But that's the reason Best Down Wax isn't advised with this, with Terra Clay paint. Um, 
but you might apply it and you might have no problems at all. But we found that it is, it's better with an oil-based wax. I'm just waiting to get my hands on it. I'm also gonna add some brown here. It's basically to give some definition around the drawers underneath here and sort of where where you find shadows so we're just emphasizing where you'd find shadows so underneath the lip underneath here underneath here maybe a little bit because this has got another drawer at the bottom i am sorry about that i don't know what happened i pressed the button and you went off don't touch the tripod connie that's we've learnt this mistake before touching buttons pressing things just leave it um so yeah that's about it today i'm not gonna i'm not gonna show you down there because i've just what I've, i don't know what i did okay i'll I'm, I'm not touch the phone so you can see down here it's got another drawer at the bottom so i'll be adding that kind of same thing around the base of that right you know around the edge of that drawer in a similar kind of way but then i'll be adding some layers over the top you're just gonna have to subscribe to the channel and wait for the video to come out aren't you at the end of the week hopefully i'll have it on a sunday i'm trying to do trying to publish a video every sunday because that always seems to work um so yeah hopefully i'll have this little side table done staged and uh up for sale if you fancy a little kermit the frog side table um yeah, might end up keeping it myself. Um, you're welcome, Dennis. You are welcome. So let me know if you've tried terra clay paint yet. Let me know if you're going to try terra clay paint. Let me know if you aren't going to try terra clay paint. Might not be your bag. Might not be your bag. I mean, you never know. Everyone's different. Everyone's different. Everyone's got a different style of painting. Everyone's got a different preference to the types of paint that they like. I personally freaking love this paint i absolutely love it and now i've got my hands on pistachio i just feel like my life's complete um because it is a gorgeous gorgeous color so yeah i also really want to try blending pink and green together at some point we'll see how that goes down um so that's it today just thought i'd quickly show you mixing brown adding shading getting around things if you haven't got stuff i.e. colours, you can still mix colours if you don't have the exact colour that you want, you can always mix it using other colours if you wanted to add shading and you can't because you don't have best down wax or you can't use best down wax there's get, there's get around, you can get around stuff you can get around stuff so yeah, I'm going to carry on adding to this um, just building up layers basically that is what I'm going to do going to be a very kind of layered a layered look a layered look and hopefully like i say video will be out at the end of the week um and i'll see you all next week for another video hopefully if i haven't bored you to death thank you for watching have a lovely day and see you later bye